In today's video, I'm gonna do a walkthrough of the math and no calculator section from the March 2021 SAT. I've scored perfectly on back-to-back -back SAT math sections, and as I go through this video, I'm gonna show you tips, tricks, and strategies you can use on the SAT math section to improve your score. So with that being said, make sure to like and subscribe, and let's go ahead and get started with question number one. So we have the function h is defined by h of x is equal to negative one quarter x minus two, which is the graph of y equals h of a h of x. Well, the first thing that we notice is that we have a negative slope, so we can go ahead and get rid of a and we can get rid of b. Next thing we notice is our y-intercept, and that should be at negative 2. We see they both have that, but the only one with negative 1 quarter slope is going to be d. So our answer for number 1 will be d. All right, moving on to number 2. What is the positive solution to the given equation? So we have x squared plus 10 equals 91. So we'll go ahead and subtract 10 from each side, subtract 10 from each side. That's going to leave us with 81 is equal to x squared. From here, we go ahead and take the square root of each side. We know the square root of 81 will be 9, so our answer is going to be a. All right, moving on to number 3. What value of x satisfies the equation above? So we've got x plus 7 is equal to, and then we're going to go ahead and distribute our 3 to our x and also to our negative 3. So that's going to give us 3x minus 9. Next thing that we want to do is we're going to go ahead and keep x positive. So to keep x positive, we're going to subtract x from each side, leaving us with 2x. Then we're going to go ahead and add 9 to each side to isolate x. We know that 7 plus 9 is going to give us 16. So we have 16 equals 2x. Divide each side by 2. And we're going to see that x is equal to 8. We see we're asked to answer with only x. So our answer there is going to be b. All right, moving on to number 4 now. So we have a line in the xy plane has a slope of 1 and passes through the point 0, 2, which means its y-intercept will be 2, which is an equation of the line. Well, with a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 2, our equation should look like this. So our answer there is going to be C. All right, moving on to number 5. We have from 1990 to 2001, German currency included coins called pfennigs, worth 1 pfennig each, and groschen, worth 10 pfennigs each. Which equation represents the number of fennig coins, P, and groschen coins, G, that have a combined value of 85 pennings? Well, we know that 85 pennings is going to equal our number of pennings plus 10 times each groschen, right? Each groschen we know is worth 10 of those pennings. So our equation then is going to be P plus 10G is equal to 85. So if we go ahead and take a look, we see that C and D have 10P, which we know is incorrect. We need P to be alone. We see A doesn't have a 10 in front of that G, so our answer is going to be B. That matches our equation that we wrote. All right, moving on to number six now. So we have if x is positive, which of the following is equivalent to 1 over x plus 1 over 2x? Well, in order to add fractions, we need a common denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 1 over x by 2 over 2. And when we multiply it by 2 over 2, we're going to end up getting 2 over 2x. Then we can go ahead and take that 2 over 2x. And now that we have a common denominator, we can add it to 1 over 2x. And we see our answer there is going to be 3 over 2x, which is going to be answer choice C. All right, moving on to number seven now. The graph in the xy plane of the equation above is a circle. What are the coordinates of the center of the circle? Well, what we need to know here is our equation for our circle, which we know is going to be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, which is equal to our radius squared. Now, what we need to identify here is our center. Our center, we know, is going to be at point hk. That's going to equal our center. Okay, so the point hk is our center here. So if we go ahead and take a look at this x minus h squared that I've written, in order to get this minus 10x, we would have to have x minus 5 squared, okay? Because x minus 5 times x minus 5 is going to give us that minus 10x, okay? We see when we distribute that negative 5 over to our x, and then when we distribute the x to our negative 5, we get that negative 10x. All right, so at this point now, we've, got, we've solved for our x-coordinate of our center. So I'm going to write center. And we know our x-coordinate is going to have to be 5 then. So we can go ahead and get rid of answer choices A and B because they have negative 5. Next, let's go ahead and solve for our y-coordinate. We see we have plus 6y. Well, therefore, then, we must have y plus 3 squared. Okay, y plus 3 squared will give us that plus 6y. Therefore, our y-coordinate of our center has to be minus 3. Now, keep in mind that in our circle equation, our center for our y-coordinate of our center is that minus k. So if we have y plus 3, then it has to be minus 3 for our center point. So we see our answer there is going to be answer choice C. All right, moving on to number 8 now. So when graphed in the xy plane, what point xy is a solution to the given system of inequalities? Now, with this question, what we're going to want to do is just go ahead and plot in our points. So let's go ahead and just reconstruct this inequality. So we know that y has got to be less than negative x, but it's got to be greater than 4x. If we were to plug in 1 and 1, well, we know that we'd have 1 here. Now, is 1 less than negative 1? 1 is not less than negative 1, therefore A is incorrect. Then we move on to B, negative 2 and negative 2. Well, we'd have 4 times negative 2, 
which we know would give us negative 8. Is negative 8 less than negative 2? It is. And then is negative negative 2? Because we have to plug in that negative 2 for x as well. Negative negative 2 is going to give us positive 2. Is 2 greater than negative 2? It is. We see that this is going to be correct then. So our answer is going to be B. So as you can see, we plugged in those answer choices, found our answer pretty quickly there. All right, moving on to number nine now. The equation H equals 150 plus 10T gives the total number of housing units H in a community T months after a new zoning law is passed. How many housing units are added to the community each month after the zoning law is passed? Well, we know that this 150 represents our y-intercept before any months occur after the zoning law. Now, for each month T that occurs after the zoning law, we see we go up by 10. Therefore, our answer is going to be A. All right, moving on to number 10 now. Which expression is equivalent to 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 minus 5x squared minus x minus 7? Well, let's go ahead and start with our initial term, which is going to be that 2x squared and then this minus 5x squared. We know that 2x squared minus 5x squared is going to end up leaving us with negative 3x squared. From here, we can go ahead and get rid of a and b. Next thing I'm going to look for is my difference between c and d. I see that I can go ahead and use that last term. So I know I'm going to have negative 2 minus negative 7. So negative 2 minus negative 7 is the same as negative 2 plus 7, which gives me a positive 5. So my answer here has to be D. And we don't even have to solve for that middle term because we, we saw for the first term, the last term, that gave us our answer. Moving on to number 11. The graph in the xy plane of the equation above contains the point A and B. If negative 1 is less than or equal to A, which is less than or equal to 1, which of the following is not a possible value of B? Key thing to understand here is if I was to draw this graph out, as I'm going to do, I would have zeros at 1 because x minus 1 gives me a 0 at 1, and then at negative 1 because x plus 1 gives me a 0 at negative 1, and then I'd also have a 0 at negative 2. So let's go ahead and plot those points out. So I'm put negative 2 here, I'm going to put negative 1 here, and then I'm going to put a 1 here. Next thing we need to understand is that this graph is cubic, okay? The highest exponent with our variable x is going to be the third root. Therefore, we know it's going to open up and it's going to go down on its other end behavior. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to go up and then right here it's going to go like that and then it's going to end up going back up okay that's how we know then that the values of b between negative one and one for the value of a which is just our x has to be negative okay as you can see i'm going to put it in orange we see that between those two points we have to be below zero therefore which of the following is not a possible value of b that's going to be anything positive which would be d okay we see that we're never going to have a positive number between those values so our answer there is d all right, moving on to number 12. All right, so we got two beach balls are each in the shape of a sphere. The larger beach ball has a diameter of 3x and the smaller beach ball has a diameter of x. Which of the following is the ratio of the volume of the larger beach ball to the volume of the smaller beach ball? Well, we know that the formula for volume of a sphere is volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, keep in mind that this 4 thirds and pi are going to be the same for both beach balls. So we can ignore that when determining the ratio between the two. Next thing we need to understand that is that the radius is getting cubed, okay? So we know that our larger beach ball's diameter is three times that of the smaller beach ball. Well, that means its radius is also three times that of the smaller beach ball. Therefore, if we say that the smaller beach ball's radius is one, we know one cubed is just gonna give us one. Now we have to triple that to account for the radius of the larger beach ball, which is gonna be three in this case. So we'd have three to the third power, which we know is 27, and we see that our ratio there is gonna be 27 to one. Key thing there is understanding both the formula for the volume of a sphere and then also recognizing that the only thing changing between those two spheres is that radius and keeping in mind you have to cube that radius so that's going to give us answer choice d all right moving on to number 13 now what is the graph of the equation y is equal to 2 times the quantity 3 to the power of x all right well the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to find my y-intercept because that's going to help me eliminate some of these so in that case i'd have y is equal to 2 times the quantity 3 raised to the power of 0 now, 3 raised to the power of 0 is actually 1, okay? Anytime that you have a number that's not 0, so any non-zero, any non-zero raised to the power of 0, so raised to the power of 0 is going to equal 1. Raised to power of 0, that's going to equal 1. So that's something you need to understand here. Now, from that, we know that 3 to the power of 0 is going to be 1, so 2 times 1 is going to give us our y-intercept of 2. Therefore, we can go ahead and get rid of answer choice B, and we can go ahead and get rid of answer choice C. So now we're between A and D. Now from here, what we can do, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite out my uh, problem here, is we're going to go ahead and just use the point 1, okay? Because we see that those are different in A and D. So we'll use the point 1. We know that 3 to the first power is going to be 3. Therefore, 2 times 3 is going to leave us with 6. 
So at the point x equals 1, we need to be at 6, which we are in A. But if we look at D, we see that at 1, we are at 4. So D is incorrect. Our correct answer there is A. All right, moving on to number 14 now. We've got the graph of the function is shown. Which of the following is a value of x for which f of x is equal to 0? Well, where f of x is equal to 0, it's going to be on our x-intercept. Okay, so we just got to find a value of x on our x on our x uh, axis here. So we can go ahead and do that. We see that we cross that x-axis at negative 2, at 1, and then at something between 2 and 3. So if we look for negative 2, we see it's not in our answer choices. If we look for 1, we see that it is. So our answer there is going to be C. Okay, so right there, just looking for where our y-axis is 0, which is going to be on our x-axis, looking for the intercepts, and then finding them in our answer choices. So that one's pretty easy. All right, number 15, the function a of t is equal to 12 times 2 to the power of t over 6 models the number of water hyacinths in a population over time, where a of t is the number of water hyacinths and t is the time in days since the population was first measured. What is the best interpretation of 2 to the power of t over 6 in this context? Well, what we need to understand here is that this 2 means that we're doubling, okay? Our initial population is represented by this 12, okay? So that 12 is our initial population. So I'll go ahead and write that down. 12 is our initial population. And then what we have to understand then is that that 2 to the power of t over 6, the 2 there, that 2 is telling us that we're doubling, doubling every time that we have 6 days go by, okay? Because if we have... 6 over 6, we'd have 2 to the first power, in which case it'd be 12 times 2, we'd have 24. If it was t to the 12, we'd have 2 to the power of 12 over 6, which would be 2 to the power of 2, and we would be quadrupling. But we have to keep in mind that's only a double from the last 6 days. Okay, so every 6 days that goes by, that exponent goes up by 1. And every time that exponent goes up by 1, we're going to multiply by 2 again, and we're going to double again. So our answer here is going to be that we're doubling every six days, which we see is going to be answer choice B. All right, moving on to question number 16. 16 says the given equation above can be rewritten as t equals a times d plus b times h, where a and b are constants. What is the value of a? So in this case, what we have to do is we have to isolate that 4t first. So we're going to go ahead and add 8d to each side, add 8d to each side. Next thing we got to do is divide each side by 4 to isolate that t. So we're going to have 12 over 4h and then 8 over 4d. Keep in mind, we only care about that coefficient in front of d because that's the value of a. And we see that that coefficient is going to be 8 over 4, which we know is 2. All right, moving on to number 17. In the figure above, bc is parallel to ad and ab is equal to cd. What is the perimeter of quadrilateral abcd? All right, well, in order to solve for the perimeter, we see that we need to solve for ba and then also cd, which we know are going to be the same. So to solve for that, we need to turn this into a triangle. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know that this will be 6 right here because we have this 6 that I'm marking in orange here. Okay, we have that 6 there, so it's also going to be a 6 here. Next thing we see is we're going to have a right angle right there. And then after that, what we know then is that this 26, if we split it in half, we're going to be left with 13 as this length right here. Now, keep in mind with that 13, We've got to take into account the fact that this 10 up top, BC, if we split that in half, then we're going to have a 5 right there. Okay, so if we go 13 minus 5, 13 minus 5, that's going to give us this right here as 8, as 8. So once we've determined that that side length is 8, well, now we have a 6, 8, 10 triangle. If you don't know what a 6, 8, 10 triangle is, I'm going to show you really quickly. If you have 6 on one side and 8 on your other side, you know by the Th Pythagorean theorem that your hypotenuse is 10. Okay, so from there, now we've solved for x as 10. And now that we've solved for x, we can go ahead and just add up our perimeter. So we're going to have a 10 here. And I'm just going to mark my perimeters in red. We're going to have a 10 there, a 10 there, a 10 there, and then a 26 right there, which we know is going to be 30 plus 26. All right, and I'm going to switch to blue so you don't think that that's wrong. Okay, I just marked it as red to use a different color. We know it's going to be 30 plus 26 gives us a total perimeter of 56. So 56 will be our correct answer there. All right, moving on to number 18 now. The equation above has solutions x equals n plus the square root of k and x equals n minus the square root of k, where n and, n, where n and k are positive integers. What's the value of n plus k? So we have to solve for both n and k. First thing that I'd be looking to do, since I see that I've got a plus root k and a minus root k, that's indicating to me it's going to be the quadratic formula that I'm using. Instead of factoring, I also know I can't factor this, so I'm going to be using the quadratic formula. All right, so doing that, let's go ahead and find our a's, our b's, and then our c's. We know quadratic formula is going to start with negative b, right, and it's all going to be over 2a. I see that my a is 1, so I can go ahead and do 2 times 1, which we know is just going to be 2. 
Next thing we've got is negative b. We know our b is going to be that negative 2 right there. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we're going to have negative negative 2. That's going to give us a positive 2. So we're going to have 2 plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac. So now for our b squared, we know that's going to be negative 2 squared. Negative 2 squared is going to give us 4. So we'll have 4 minus 4 times a, which we know is 1, and then times our c, which is negative 1. So times our c of negative 1. Well, that's going to end up leaving us with 4, and then minus 4 times negative 1, which gives us plus 4. So 4 plus 4 is going to give us the square root of 8. Now, from the square root of 8, we know that we can go ahead and take out 2 squared, okay? Square root of 8 is the same as the square root of 2 times 2 times 2. From that, we can go ahead and take out two of those 2s, because that would be 2 squared, put it in front. Now, from here, what we can do is we can go ahead and simplify down, okay? We know that 2 over 2 is going to give us 1. So we're going to end up having 1 plus or minus, and then once again, our 2s here are going to cancel as well. So that's going to leave us with 1 plus or minus square root 2. Now keep in mind, our answer here is n plus k. k is what's underneath that square root. So that's going to be 1 plus 2, which we know will equal 3. Therefore, our answer is going to be 3 for number 18. All right, moving on to number 19. So we have if, f, if x, y is the solution to the given system of equations, what is the value of x? Well, to solve for x here, what I want to do is I want to add or subtract my bottom equation from my top equation in order to get rid of my y's. So since I see I have minus 7y in my bottom equation, I'm going to multiply my top equation by 7, and then I'm going to add them together, and that's going to eliminate my y's. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to multiply that top equation by 7, and then we'll add them together. Well, 7 times 4x is going to give me 28x plus 2x. That'll leave me with 30x. Next thing, we have 7 times y plus negative 7y. That gets rid of my y's. Next, we'll have 7 times 7, which will give me 49. 49 plus 1 will give me 50. From here, all i got to do is divide each side by 30. And when I do that, I'm going to be left, when I simplify down, with 5 thirds. So my answer is going to be 5 over 3. So what is the value of x? The value of x is 5 over 3. All right, moving on to number 20 now. This will be our last question. And the equation above, k is a constant. The equation has no solution, which is the key to solving this problem. What is the value of k? Well, in order for an equation to have no solution, we need to have different y-intercepts, which we see that we do. And then we have to have the same slope. So to have the same slope here, k also has to equal 1 half. So our answer for the value of k is 1 half. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to like and subscribe. In addition to that, if you're looking for private SAT tutoring, college essay editing, or college admissions consulting, be sure to check out my website. The link is in the description. In addition to that, if you're gaining value from my channel and from my content, please consider donating. It helps me be able to continue to put these videos out for free.